Although the UK is the seventh richest country in the world, many people struggle to afford food. Over two million people in the UK are estimated to be malnourished, and three million are at risk of becoming so. Since 2000, there has been a huge rise in charitable food provisions in the UK, with the biggest increase happening in the last five years. Oh, if they want such places as these, people really struggle uh, with no food and stuff. It's It does help. It lasts a couple of days, but it does help. Um, I went back the... Yeah, um, what do they call it? DWP? went back there and asked them if they could help and they said, no, you've just got to wait for your first, your first lot of money to come through. And then someone said, oh, go and get a food bank voucher. I said, well, where'd you get them from? They said, how do I know? I'm like, well, if you don't know, how do I know? We weren't very helpful in the job centre. Sometimes I can go a couple of days without food, you know what I mean? And sometimes I'll go off days and days because a little bit of money I'm getting, I've got to feed my dog. And my dog's more important because I can ask for a sandwich where he can't. I'm Letitia and I've never used a food bank, but I know a lot of people who have. I'm Martin, and me and my family have had to depend on food banks. Martin and I didn't know that we, or anyone else, had a right to food. Or that the government is legally required under international human rights law under, to secure the human right to adequate food for everyone in the UK. We're asking, is the state taking responsibility for our right to food? How is it respecting? protecting and fulfilling that right. Or is acting against its obligations with the introduction of welfare conditionality and sanctions. What is the relationship between the state and the charities that provide emergency food? And is anyone being held accountable? We are therefore asking whether the welfare reforms are actually exacerbating food poverty, meaning that the state is not fulfilling its obligation under the right to food. One of the largest providers of emergency food relief through food banks is the Trussell Trust. We've seen a 19% increase just in the last year, so we fed over a million people uh, between 2014 and April 2015. Um, and we attribute that to um, a number of things, but in particular um, benefit delays, benefit changes and low income. Lots of people on very unsteady wages, um, zero hours contracts, um, and then people facing difficulties with um, administrative delays with their benefits as well. I mean, we've always seen that people have been coming because of benefit problems, uh, perhaps changing from one benefit to another. Um, but we're seeing those delays get a lot longer. We're seeing people who are in work um, in a lot more uncertain um, payments. So people's crises are lasting longer than they ever used to. That's one of the things that we're seeing. Um, so we give out three days worth of food at any one time. But we are finding that some people require more than one food parcel to get them through. Welfare reforms such as sanctions and benefit caps and low wages leave many people with little or no money for food. Many households have to prioritise rent and utility bills over food, meaning they do not have the means to obtain adequate food. The state's obligations under the right to food are not just about providing food to people in food poverty. The obligations require the state to remove the obstacles that prevent people from accessing their right to food. This could include the abolition of sanctions, the reinstatement of the welfare safety net. Bringing back crisis loans and making sure people know how to get one. Giving incentives to local shops to encourage them to sell good quality and nutritional produce. Instead of people having to travel to large supermarkets. Providing free food for children during school holidays. Several people from the church had a concern for the, the well-being of children during the summer holidays because it's such a long holiday. And we just wanted to make sure that we were doing something to help support them through a time that had the potential to be difficult for, for some of the families of young children particularly who've been receiving a free school meal at school. Make the government accountable for its obligations under the right to food. If people knew they had the right to food, what difference could it make? Imagine if Letitia and I told two people each. And they told two people each. And then they told two people each. And 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 then they told two people each. And they told two people each. And they told two people each.